So I've got here the Tabiger soldering iron kit. Um, let's talk about the soldering iron first. This is super important. So you'll see there's a dial here. It is a lie um, and, it, and it can be very dangerous if you rely on this. So um, I have a multimeter with a temperature attachment sensor and it reads that when this is at 200, it was reading something closer between 250 and 275. So that's, that's a big difference. And um, this is not necessarily linear. So as you turn this, uh, the temperature change may or may not be reliably between like, you know, one quarter turn and the next quarter turn. Um, but it does not take much. I think it was maybe right around here or maybe right around here, but it got up to 350 degrees Celsius very quickly. Um, the very first time I used it, I put it at 300 and it vaporized the rosin from the solder immediately and caused the solder to melt and splatter immediately. So that's, that's dangerous. You definitely don't want to go... I mean, basically, they're probably all different. Otherwise, they could have pr printed a reliable thing that actually tells you what the temperature is. So my guess is that from one manufacturer on to the, the next, there's some sort of variance in there. Um, but keep that in mind. Um, you need to start on the lowest, and it may even be too hot. So secondly, let's talk about... Uh, so that's very pragmatic, you know, in terms of being able to get your project done. Um, and uh, notice that this... this cable here is not polarized. Now that's important. Polarized means that it has a bigger side on one end than the other so that it only fits in one way. This not being polarized tells us that this iron doesn't have a safety fuse inside. So if something uh, goes wrong in here, you've got the full 120 volts, 20 amps of your wall outlet. So I just pulled off the rubber stopper there. I'm going to pull off this little um, uh, tab to the variable resistor, the potentiometer in there, and then I'm going to undo this. Oh, whoops. Um, oh, okay. Oh, I had already, I, I didn't put it on all the way last time I took it off there. Okay. So when we look inside here, you've got this heating element. Um, I'm not sure if that's a transistor or voltage regulator, what's going on there, but um, a diode, um, capacitor, resistors, LED, variable resistor for the temperature control and then your AC mains. There's no fuse on this. So keep that in mind just as uh, a safety thing. Um, now the good news is because I don't I don't mean to be negative or anything like I'm just trying to give a, a good faithful review here. Um, so the good thing is it comes with multiple tips. The tips dissipate heat very quickly most of the time. They oxidize very fast and the whole tip oxidizes. I can't get this thing in focus here. Oh, anyway, um, let me try that one more time. There we go. Okay, so this is the bevel tip. Um, this one is one of the ones that dissipates heat the most quickly. It comes in handy. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive for those of us starting out, but you actually want to use the biggest tip that you can so that heat dissipates very quickly and um, you get the job done. So let me put this... Oh, whoops. I'll fix that later. Put it in backwards. Let's get that out of the way. So iron's most important. We talked about that first. Stand doesn't actually fit in the toolbox, so the toolbox doesn't end up being that great for carrying because you don't want to like unscrew it and rescrew it every single time. That's kind of annoying. Uh, but let's open it up. There's some goodies in here. I'm just going to dump everything out because I want to be quick about this. Um, electrical tape, eh, whatever. You know, not not really a deciding factor there. It's fine electrical tape. These are good. I mean, if you ordered these on their own, it'd be like five or six bucks if you wanted to get prime shipping. Um, and you know, they're decent. Just only cut wires with them. Don't cut your perf board or other stuff with them. Otherwise you're gonna mess them up. And that's not because they're crappy or bad. It's just they're built to be diagonal wire cutters, not to be perf board and other stuff cutters. I did that with mine. So these are now my spare pair to cut weird things. And I've got another pair that I bought to keep as my uh, nice wire cutters. You get, um, Blunt tip tweezers, I use these to hold a component down. Like the best news about this is see that soldering right here? Let's see if I can bring this up and get that to you. So I did that soldering with that blunt temp tip with this iron. So you can even do small tiny component soldering with this. Uh, you probably need to watch a couple videos on YouTube on tips and tricks for that because it's kind of counterintuitive. It's called drag soldering what you do. Anyway. Then you've got these tips that are nice and sharp. Um, mine actually came bent, so I just used a pair of pliers to uh, straighten them out. One of the tips was bent. 
Um, so, but you know, that's fine. That's nice to get that. Screwdriver, nothing too special to speak about. It's got a medium, medium small Phillips head and flat head on there. It's also got a little like fuse or neon line or something inside for doing wall testing, but don't do that. Um, solder wick. It's great to have solder wick. Again, you know, if you just got this on its own, like really what makes this worth it is uh, the cutters, the desoldering, the solderer. This is completely useless. The hookup wire, don't even bother. It's it, it's so thin and so tiny. Plus it's enameled, so you have to sandpaper it. It'll rip while you're trying to sandpaper it. Um, but this really is what makes the kit worth it. The iron is really only good as a secondary iron, in my opinion. Um, the wick is not, however, coated in rosin. So, you know, you might think, oh, this doesn't work. Like, what's going on? What am I doing wrong? You actually have to coat it in rosin, which we'll uh, get to in just a second. But you can actually use the rosin here and just rub it on there and it'll 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 work. And then, then the wick will do what it needs to do. There is such thing as bad solder. This is not bad solder. Um, I think it'd be nicer if they gave 0.4 millimeter solder because you can always get more solder onto your tip. Um, but uh, you know that for for just where you need your tip wet, that's and and most componentry through hole soldering that you're doing, that's thin enough. But there are cases where having thinner would make it slightly easier. But this is good. This I mean, this is actually perfect. Um, it's not too thick. It's not too thin. Where it is too thin, it can still get the job done with tips and tricks. Um, the desoldering pump works as expected. So you push the thing down. You get the board hot with the iron. You go. And uh, then after a couple times of doing that, you end up with one of these little things coming out when um, when you press it again. So it'll be like stuck in there, kind of like like that. And then the, you know that you need to wait a second, let it cool, pull it out, and then you can continue to use it again. So no complaints there. Uh, the tip is uh, temperature safe, so you know you're not going to melt it. It's it's high temp plastic. I think it's rated up to or 500 degrees Celsius or something like that. Wouldn't put it directly on the iron or anything, but you can get it up there in the solder, have it touch in the solder, press the button, have it wicked away. In fact, I was able to, uh, let's see if you can see this. I was able, that hole right there um, was by me putting that thing next to it and sucking the solder right out of it. So it, it sucking the solder is sometimes better than a solder wick and that you can even get the stuff all the way from the other side of the board. Um, you've got these different tips, which is great. You've got the knife tip, the chisel tip, and then the, the bevel tip that was already on the iron that I showed earlier. Those are the ones that you're probably going to need to use the most, because like I said, you want to have uh, the greatest surface area. Occasionally, you'll have a place that you can't get into with anything other than a chisel tip, or you need to do some really fine tracing between um, some lines. Um, so, for example... You, uh, if you want to do something like this, you can actually draw backwards if you've got um, rosin on there. you got to coat it with rosin again. You can draw backwards and you can get that stuff out on the tip, then clean the tip off on the sponge. Doot, doot, doot. Get the job done. Um, okay, so now we're on to one of the more important parts here. So uh, I, I broke this out. You can use this, you can't use it the way that they show you in the picture. Like you can't just dip your soldering iron in this and then take it to the board that like it'll burn up by the time it gets there. That doesn't make any sense. But what you can do is you can either use it like this and just like directly rub it on components. And I actually did this to test it out. And that's, that's how I got that done so nicely in the end. It took a lot longer than it would have with a, you know, good iron with temperature control and, you know, the right tip and the right flux, but I was able to do it. So I was super impressed, but what you can do is just take a jar, small jar, preferably like an empty nail polish bottle. So you got the brush there too, and you don't have to get it like a paintbrush or something separate or Q-tips. But anyway, um, you get you get the jar, you fill it. Um, by weight, you want it to be 50% this and 50% as high isopropyl alcohol as you can get. So just go to Walmart. Then you want to put in a couple drops of glycerin. And this you need to crush up first. You don't just drop it in there. You like put it in a bag, crush it up with a hammer. Um, and then let it sit there for 24 to 48 hours, come by every once in a while in the morning and the evening, swish it around a little bit. Um, but then you can turn this solid rosin into actual usable flux that you can just use a paintbrush or a nail brush and get on the board, and then it'll work like it's supposed to. So conclusion is, for 20 bucks, it's not a bad deal. One other quick thing, the X-Acto knife works well in that well, with a lot of these, uh, this thing that loosens and tightens doesn't do a good job and this will always fall out whenever you use it. This one stays nice and sturdy, so that's good to know too.